Hello, everyone. My name is Jiaxin Lei from Binghamton University. Today, I'm going to talk about our paper, Parallelizing Packet Processing in Container Overlay Networks. This is a joint work with my advisor, Hui Lu, Manish Monica Jarao from University of Texas at Arlington, and Quinswell from Kennesaw State University. So let me introduce the container overlay networks first. Containers are taking over the cloud. They provide lightweight operating system level virtualization with the fastest setup, high application density, and efficient resource utilization. It is reported that Google launches over 7,000 containers every second in its search engine with the help of our chat treatment tools like Kubernetes and Docker Swarm. Services of a distributed application can be packaged into multiple containers, automatically and dynamically deployed across physical or virtual machines. But here's a question. How could these containers communicate with each other? So next, let me introduce the overlay network which is a de facto technique providing a customized connectivity among containers. Some example overlay solutions are like Docker overlay, Flannel, Calico, and Wave. They are generally built upon the tunneling approach like the VXLAN protocol. VXLAN protocol enables the container network traffic to go through the physical network by encapsulating the original container package within its host header. With a unique VXR ID, containers belonging to a same virtual network can be identified and isolated to communicate with its private IP address. Well, actually the packets are routed through the underlying public network with its host IP address. So what is the overhead of this kind of complicated packet encapsulation? Let me show some data. We were motivated by the single flow performance tests. Our two machines are directly connected via a 100 gigabit network card. For single flow throughput test, comparing to the host network, Container overlay networks drops by 53% and 47% for UDP and TCP separately. For single flow latency test, container overlay networks increase by at least two times for UDP and three times for TCP. So why is overlay network so slow? What is the essential root cause here? To explain this, Let's first check out how a host level packet is processed in Linux. When the packet arrives at the NIC, it is first copied to the device buffer, then triggers a hardware interrupt. Next, kernel responds to this hardware interrupt, then starts the packet receiving path by raising a software interrupt. Afterwards, packet will be processed at different pro protocol layers in the context of software interrupts. Finally, packet will be copied to the user space buffer, but um, then delivered to the application. So we can see for a host and network packet, there's only one hardware interrupt and one software interrupt incurred here. However, packet processing in container over the networks is um, more complex pipeline that contains multiple dev network devices and stages. When the first software interrupt is being processed, the network stack will identify that this is an encapsulated over the, net uh, over the network package. So it will do the decapsulation in protocol stack to remove the outer header, then keep moving the inner packet into the container bridge device and 
the container virtual NIC by raising the second and the, the third software interrupt. Eventually, packet will be delivered to the target container application. So here, container overlay package incurs one hardware interrupt, three software interrupts, which are triggered by the different network devices separately. So to summarize, comparing with the host network, additional network devices prolong the packet processing path and excessive serialized software interrupts lead to high overhead of container overlay networks. This performance issue of overlay networks is well identified. Um, there are some existing works targeting to solve this problem. For example, uh, in a kernel bypass design like DPDK, packets are directly processed in a customized user-level network stack, such as MTCP. This solution avoids the operating system level overheads, such as software interrupts and context switchings. But it requires application developers to change the application source code. And also, operators have no control of network stack. In another kind of design like Slim, it creates a new connection level metadata transformation protocol. With this new customized protocol, we can avoid the overhead of the additional virtual devices and the prolonged data path. It is fast, but this design has some limitations like the limited scalability and the limited support for enforcing the network policies. The last kind of solution is hardware offloading. For example, Excel Knight from Microsoft deploys the state-of-art FPGA-based smart NICs in their data center to offload the most CPU-intensive network processing tasks onto this customized hardware. But this kind of solution usually requires the expensive hardware. Our solution solved this problem in a different way. We target salvaging the commodity operating system kernel to specifically support the overlay networks. The key idea of our design, Falcon, is uh, leveraging the multi-core architecture to utilize the idle CPU resources to accelerate the packet processing. It is a complete software-based and backward compatible solution. We improved the performance of overlay networks while still providing the full features of Linux network stack, such as isolation, flexibility, and scalability. So next, let's go through our design. The first design in Falcon is software interrupt pipelining. As shown in this figure, the blue blocks represent that the packet processing inside the first software interrupt. Green is the second one and the yellow is the third one. So remember that software interrupts in packet processing path are triggered by different network devices separately. So these three different stages can be dispatched and uh, parallelized. Based on our code level research, we identified the stage transition functions in the kernel. This function is used to enqueue the packet to the next network device, then raise a new software interrupt for the following packet processing. In the original design, this function does the hash-based calculation to determine the target CPU core using four tuples, source IP port and destination IP port. So we modified these functions to also consider the device ID. In this way, different software interrupts of the same flow will be raised on different CPU cores. 
our design implements the single flow parallelization by these overlapping software interrupts. And also we maintain the packet order because the software interrupts are still raised stage by stage. Based on our tests, software interrupts pipelining performs well will, uh, all of, when all of the three stages have the similar processing cost, such as a UDP flow. But for TCP flow, especially with the large packet size, when GRO enabled, so um, GRO is an internal packet processing optimization, which aggregates multiple received small packet into one big packet. So in this case, the, the first stage is much more expensive than others. The other stages are invoked only for a fraction of the packet. In this case, even when we enable software interrupts pipelining, the processing is still not efficient due to the heavily loaded first stage. So we proposed the second design, software interrupts splitting. With the dynamic tracing, we found that the first stage of TCP packet processing is mainly dominated by two functions, SKB allocation and GRO processing. So we implemented it by enabling the transition function when entering the GRO routine. In this way, we successfully keep, keep splitting one heavy software interrupt into two light software interrupts. The last part in Falcon is software interrupts balancing. We realized that if a CPU core is already heavily loaded, especially in multiple flow case, then even if we dispatch a software interrupt onto that core, the software interrupt processing will have a long waiting time before it is scheduled to run. The packets can even be jogged if the input packet queue is full. This can even make the performance worse. So to avoid this, we developed a simple but effective balancing algorithm. By periodically monitoring the current load on all CPU cores, we create a new attribute in per CPU core data structure to represent the current loading state. When doing the dispatching, if the target core is already heavily loaded, we will do the rehash to get the second choice of the destination core. We also realized that when the whole system is, is heavily loaded, Falcon incurs additional overhead due to the loss of packet locality. In this case, there's no available CPU resources for parallelization. Therefore, it can even degrade the performance. To avoid this, we dynamically disable Falcon when the overall system load is greater than a threshold. It is 90% by default, and also it is configurable. And that's part, uh, I'm going to talk about the evaluation. Our test bed contains two servers equipped with 40 logical cores. Intel CPU and 128 gigabytes memory. They are connected via the Mellanox 100 gigabits NIC. The base operating system we used is Ubuntu 18.04 with Linux kernel 5.4. So first, let's take a look at the IOPS performance for a single UDP flow. As shown in this figure, with various package size from 16 byte to 64 K byte, we achieve more than two times performance improvement compared with the vanilla container network. We also observed the similar improvement for single flow latency. Due to serialized execution of multiple stages on the same core, the container latency is more than two times than host network. However, Falcon achieves both the median and the tail latency much close to the host network. For multiple flow tests, 
we changed the flow number from 1 to 20. The package size was set to 16 byte and 4K byte for UDP and TCP. For UDP, we can see Falcon can consistently improve the vanilla container by as much as 55%. For TCP, we further enabled the GRO splitting technique for the host network, which is marked as host plus. So GRO splitting can even help achieve up to 56% throughput improvement in host plus than the vanilla host network. And also for all the networks, Phil can output, outperform the vanilla by as much as 45%. Then we, dem we also demonstrated the significance of Felk's balance algorithm. We created the hotspots by suddenly increasing the intensity of certain flows, resulting in some overloaded course. Our proposed two-choice balance algorithm achieved 18% higher throughput in UDP and 15% higher throughput in TCP. Next, we further measured the average and the tail latency using MemCacheD data caching benchmark in Cloud Suite. So for 10 clients case, Phil can reduce the average and tail latency by 51% and 53%. So let me summarize our work. We demonstrated that the performance loss in container only networks is due to the serialized, excessive, and expensive software interrupts. Our solution Falcon parallelizes the software, software interrupt processing with three designs. Software interrupt pipelining, software interrupt splitting, and dynamic balancing. We enabled the fine-grained, low-cost flow parallelization on multi-core machines, then significantly improved the balance, the performance of container-only networks. If you are interested, please check out our paper. We have more design details and more evaluation test results showing in the paper. Thank you.